Hello, everyone. So today we wanted to give a overview. Um, so a slightly deeper dive, but not too deep on um, kind of the TMF as we've discussed a few times in the last couple power of work presentations, but also kind of diving into the actual work of the TMF, which is the kind of the quality check of the document. So an introduction to clinical trial. Um, just to, this should be a refresher, but we want to make sure that we kind of keep uh, reiterating the concept and kind of the the overall goal and why we, why this work is important and for the TMF, right? So the TMF relates to clinical trials, and in order to get a drug, a medicinal product on the market to be sold, each company will perform a clinical trial to test and see if their drug is actually helpful. And, um, and there's a whole stages of that as we discussed previously, but there is, you know, testing the safety of it in addition to, does this actually have a benefit, right? So you actually have to show, you can't just, even if your drug is super safe, that's not enough to, to get FDA approval. It needs to actually like produce a benefit for them to allow you to sell it. So that's um, something that companies have to, keep all their data and make sure that they can prove that, right? And that's part of that data collection and those documentation is the TMF. So during a clinical trial, the company will follow rules um, to show that they have done everything properly and the results are valid. So we'll also share these slides, but um, we'll provide additional uh, information so you can kind of dive in deeper. Mm -hmm. But for example, the ICH is the International Council for Harmonization. And that's a, a term to know because that's something that all clinical trials are adhering to these standards to make sure that the patients are going to be safe and that it's kind of conducted in a routine manner in a sense so that it's also easier for you know, regulatory authorities such as the um, FDA to be able to say, yes, you're doing this in the correct manner. So these principles, um, so we talk about uh, good clinical practices, um, and that's a term that you should um, get very familiar with. And we're also happy to provide a link to additional um, good clinical um, practices training. But the overall idea is that the data and the results are accurate and the patients are protected. And then how TMF comes into play of this is that the a document processor is doing a quality check according to these principles to make sure that the document is accurate and that it can be used to prove the accuracy of these information, right? So the data and the results and the patient, patient protection. So yeah, so if that's done correctly, then um, the pharmaceutical company can have the ability to sell their drug ideally and the patients are protected. All right, so diving a little bit deeper into the TMF. So as we've mentioned, the um, each clinical trial has tons and tons of documents, right? And this is how they prove that uh, everything was done safely and that the data is valid and that patients were protected. And the amount of documents varies, right? It depends on what kind of disease you're, you're looking at, what you're doing, right? There could be a device, um, and also it matters um, the like how large and what phase the study's in. So there's no set amount. There's not like there's you know 584 documents and you're just looking for that and you're just checking. It's not like that because it varies um, from each site and also from each study. So when an auditor or inspector comes, they will ask for specific documents, and um, and usually a lot of times they'll ask for access to now because um, a lot of things are done digitally. And ideally, you want to be able to prove that they are able to produce these documents, right? And here, we you know, we said that um, we found that um, it says three to five minutes to produce a document. It's a little bit longer, but the idea is that there are multiple requests coming in. And so you don't have that much time to be able to produce these documents. So you want to be able to do them quickly and the idea also behind this is that these documents are used to run the study, 
So these documents shouldn't be hard to find because you should already be utilizing these documents, right? Um, so for example, we have like a 1572, which outlines a lot of the aspects for a site. And that should be a readily available document because it should be something that the team is using on a regular basis to kind of see what's going on and to make sure that the lab address didn't change or um, who's on there to make sure that um, to utilize that for training purposes. Um, so it should be a used document, not something that they have to go find in a sense. Um, and that's kind of the, the, the time aspect just in a, in a way to prove that. Um, and then, so yeah, so you wanna produce the documents quickly and, and, and proving that you, you are utilizing them. And so we'll go into kind of a, a TMF map and a TMF plan, which are two tools that a lot of companies utilize to keep all their documents in order and kind of set up a structure for the company. So um, as we've mentioned, the yeah, TMF is where um, all of the, the documents are put in. And you can think of this as a file folder. Uh, and then the most companies have a, a ETMF, right? It's an electronic version uh, because like most items now, everything's electronic, but we do have um, some companies that will might have old paper studies. Like if a study has been going on for 10 years and they started in paper, they may have just continued in paper. And so it's not um, totally unheard of, but right now it's probably pretty rare to deal with paper. And then um, as we've talked about the, the, the map and the plan. So you, you have the map is usually in regards to the reference model and it, we'll dive a little bit deeper and we'll kind of so, show some images. And then the plan is kind of like an overall like guidance for this. And then, um, and actually Nick mentioned this earlier in a presentation we had this week where basically each company does this differently. So you really want to, you know, these trainings are to help you get the foundation, but when you come to a new company to do this TMF work, you're going to need to learn their style, the, how their map is set up and how their plan is set up, because that's not restricted by the FDA. It's not restricted like a, a very set, here's what you use. This is a template. There are some standard um, templates, but uh, it's basically to be adapted for, and be specific for the company. So in a sense, be, be flexible. Um, so the, in regards here, they're kind of talking about the, the map, uh, but basically, so you have what we refer to as the reference model, and it will go over kind of all the different sections. And you can think of the, the artifacts as, you can think of like the zones as like a drawer in a big cabinet. And then inside the inside the cabinet, you have like larger filing folders. And in the folders, you can maybe put multiple items will be in the same folder. And um, so example, if you were like doing your taxes, you would have maybe like a folder that you could, or this drawer that you would say like important documents. And then inside there, you might have a, a big folder that says taxes. And then inside you might have dividers that say the year. And then in that like subfolder, you'd still have a whole bunch of different items. You have your receipts and maybe when you're done filing your taxes, you'd have your taxes in there. Um, but so it's not specifically just one item that fits in that subfolder. So that's kind of one way to imagine this because I think, especially if you're coming from a different industry, um, this is all very foreign and you wanna have an idea of, you know, what what's actually going into this and kind of having a an abstract idea of it. So I like to think of it as like a, a filing structure. So this is an example. Um, and again, people use the terminology varies. Um, I like to say this is the map and this is the or the TMF reference model. Um, so people will call it the plan. Um, but this is basically this big Excel that most companies use. Some people do their own thing and they will just have, um, for example, like even like a Word document and it classifies kind of their filing structure. But that's that's pretty rare nowadays. A lot of people have adopted the TMF reference model or something similar where it's a large Excel that details all the different folders, right? And even like the subfolders. 
And, and you can see in column J, there's examples, right? So that would be if we're talking about that subfolder, so like site initiation. And then in that one, you might have training um, and different types of training, such as like EDC, IXRS, which are different systems. Okay, now I kind of want to get an idea of giving you a little overview on like what you're at, what you would actually be doing. You would be doing a QC of the document. So um, when we start a quality check, usually you're given a list of documents and it can look like something like this. And this can be an Excel that's downloaded from a system. And um, that's typically kind of the common way to have this. Um, and then each row represents a different document. And usually they're linked. You can click the document and you can get to uh, the system and actually view the document. When looking at the document, there are a couple key items. And there, there's more. And um, as mentioned, you want to follow the SOP, which is standard operating procedures of the company, right? But this is just the high level of what you'd be looking for in the document. You want to make sure the document is like complete and if it's inspection ready. Um, and part of that means that the document needs to be correctly filed in the right spot. And, um, and then index, like the metadata, if you're working on a system, needs to be entered in correctly. And then the items within the document, you're looking to see, as I mentioned, like, is the document complete? Is it missing pages? Is it a document you already have? Because then you don't need it, right? You don't want duplicates. Is there a signature that should have been there? Um, are the pages out of order, right? Especially back in the day when it was just kind of very quickly scanned. Um, the TMF, a lot of times, um, wasn't a priority for a lot of people. And so it's becoming more important, especially as regulatory um, agencies such as the FDA say it's important. People are paying a little bit more attention to the documentation, but before it would be bad scanned copies, pages that are, you know, in the wrong order, um, uh, incorrect date and name and classification if you're like, you know, in the system, right? And then here are some other um, just kind of what we've mentioned, but in a little bit more detail. So um, if you're looking for a translation, there should be it's kind of a packet. So you have um, the translated document, um, the original document in the language, and then usually a certification saying this item has been translated. And then, um, you know, if the content is inaccurate, as we mentioned, signatures, um, typically if you see a signature spot left blank, um, that is a concern. And we'll go into some exceptions later. Um, and then also PHI is, um, you don't want anything that's related to the patient on these documents typically, because the sponsor, the company that's running the study is not supposed to have exposure to that, right? That should be stayed at the, basically, if you think of it as like the doctor's office. So if you were looking at Viva, which is a very common system, um, this would definitely give you a little bit of an idea of um, what it looks like. So you might have the document on the left and on the right, you would have like a column that shows the metadata. And this is what you're checking. If you're looking at the document and you're comparing it to the metadata, because as we saw earlier, when it's stored and let's say you're running a report, you're just getting that one line, right? And it would have the name and some of the information and the metadata. And so you want that to be accurate. Um, and so, for example, you have the name, the title, the classification, and then you would also check the, um, the dates. Uh, and, and basically, there's a lot of different um, styles. Like, for example, if it was a site item, you could see, have like the study, study country, study site. Um, so, yeah, so you'd want to make sure that the metadata is accurate. And then part of it is making sure that the name, and the date is correct. And so that's when you would go back to your, your, your map or your, or your guidance documents or your reference model that would give you this information. So kind of whatever the company has that's providing, here is where our standard. And so then you can check, okay, this is the actual um, folder. And in this folder, we want everything named in this style. And sometimes it'll even have specification as you can see, um, if it's a different item, it might have a different um, way they want it to be titled. So um, here it looks like they have a template 
or a completed training log or a certificate. They want that name there, but then they want um, the protocol number before and then the site after. And so basically all that naming convention is important because it helps when you're looking for these documents, right? And we talked about that. Part of it is being able to pull these documents quickly, right? As we talked about any sort of inspection and getting ready to submit this as a big packet to the FDA, you wanna be able to pull these documents quickly. And that's why it's nice to have everything named correctly so that as you're getting ready for this, you can run reports and you can identify issues, right? The thing is filed in the wrong spot. So, you know, just, just reiterate. So as we've mentioned, you want to be able to find the documents quickly. So you don't want it to be filed in the wrong spot. So you, or, or titled differently, right? If it's a monitoring report, but you don't know what a monitoring report looks like, that's kind of an issue because you want to be able to look at this document. Sometimes they have a title, right, on the actual document, but you want to be able to know the documents to the point where you can properly classify it in the right folder so that later, and it could be years later, when somebody actually needs that document, they can just look for it and find it really easily. But if, you, if you're titling a document incorrectly and filing it in the wrong spot, it'll be really hard to find. And then as we mentioned, um, part of this, it takes time. It takes time to really know all the documents. And so we actually do have a document library and um, we try to have an example um, reference model that links to all different examples of some different documents. So you can start to get really familiar because that's something that if you want to be a TMF um, document processor, being able to be really familiar with the documents helps because it can help you quickly file things. It can help you file things accurately, as we mentioned. And so uh, a way if you wanted to get you know, good at this job is really learning the documents. And uh, we'll ideally go over the documents and continue to go over the documents in um, the following trainings. And so then um, part of this, part of the process is um, documenting the QC, right? Um, a lot of times that's within the system, but you can also do it as a tracker uh, where basically you can say, is this document ready? Is there an issue? What's the issue type? And, and then you can write any comments. So for example, yeah, it has examples here where in the green box, you could write an issue such as duplicate, missing pages or missing signature. And then um, in column O in the blue box, you could write like the actual specific item, like missing signature on page four, right? And the idea is that there's somebody else that provided you this document. So you are the gatekeeper and the organizational, or you can even think of it like as like the librarian of these cabinets with all these different folders. And, but you're not the actual document owner. You're not the person typically collecting the document or calling the doctor's office and saying, hey, we're missing this training record for this doctor. And then they send that doctor's training record over. Somebody else goes over and submits it to be filed or files it themselves digitally, right? And, but as like the librarian gatekeeper, you are making sure everything's done correctly. And so you might say, hey, there's an issue, but you're not really the person to usually solve it. Usually the you send it back to the person who found the document and said, hey, there's an issue with the document and then they can help resolve it. So that's why it's important to do good documentation because you want somebody else to read your note and understand what you're saying. And then um, performing QC of the documentation, you are trying to make sure that um, all the QC findings are all documented in the comment section, right? And as I mentioned, you want to be clear and concise so that it's easy for people to read your comments and know and solve it, right? Because that's the most important part is not just identifying, but helping making sure that it gets solved and updated so that when there is an inspection, everything's great. Everything's clean. Everything's been resolved. Okay, a few exceptions. So as we mentioned, for example, uh, there might be, I, this is again, why it's important to really know the documents, right? So one of them, for example, is a protocol um, signature page. Uh, this document is usually normally filled out as a single page. So it might seem like there's missing pages, but it's the only signature um, page that's required. So therefore it should just be a single page, but it needs to be signed, right? And likewise in the protocol, you have everything that blank version 
is there too usually, right? So that's a protocol is a big document that explains the study and explains um, how the study should be run. And it has a whole bunch of different components that we should totally go into at some point, but there will be a blank template signature page. And so in that document, it's okay to have a blank one, but then when you get the signature page, you'll have the signature page for every site. And so you should have tons of them and you don't need tons of the entire packet. You just need that one signature page. So that's something where you want to be familiar with the documents because then you go, oh, that makes sense that this is page 30 out of like 500, but you're just looking for page 30. And then there are templates, right? So um, the ICF is the informed consent form, which is another very important document that we'll go over at some point. And um, it's blank. It's a, a form that's filled out by the patient. And it's we don't even see that version. We even It's a template that's provided to the site. And the site will update it, make sure they agree with it. So it can actually be varied per site. And then they use it to make sure that their patients are fully informed and willing to join the study. So basically the template version um, will be left blank, right? And yeah, and there's, pro there's several other versions of templates of items. And so it's okay if those are blank. Um, and that's why also naming is important. So a lot of times actually we saw in a previous item, I think it was a training record, and it said template. So like, that's why you'd want to name it template. So that's why somebody who's looking at it goes, oh yeah, this is a template. It's okay to be blank. I'm not going to um, document this as an error. And yeah, that's a quick overview of um, TMF, what you'd be looking for in a document. Uh, so examples of kind of how you would utilize the, the reference model to identify issues. And yeah, anyone have any questions?